did you know that the Russian city of Yekaterinburg is known as the capital of constructivism or more accurately constructivist architecture there's more and better examples here than anywhere else in the world What's so cool about the architectural ensemble behind me is that it's actually in the shape of a hammer and sickle, the emblems of the Soviet Union. Although you can't really tell that from the ground level. I guess you'd have to see it from above. But unfortunately, I can't afford to hire a helicopter and drones are not allowed in Russia anymore. So you just have to use your imagination. So from the inside, you can quite clearly see that this building, which was a hotel, clearly was the sickle. You can see the, the curvy shape there, can't you? This architectural ensemble is really interesting, actually. It was built for the workers, I guess, and the more senior workers of the KGB. And so <laughs> if I was walking around here at the time, I'd probably be getting arrested now. I suppose this building here is supposed to be the hammer. Like I said, it's not at all obvious from the ground level. As you can see now, it's kind of seen far better days. But, you know, at the time, you know, this was seriously elite housing. This thing's a little bit quirky. Uh, that's probably why the pigeon's taken an interest in it. People have just basically stuck crockery on there <laughs> got some open balconies there and also something really enhancing the historic atmosphere of the building a satellite dish I thought satellite dishes were supposed to be high up anyway to get a good reception I mean that was really low they must get a rubbish reception not content with one really cool example of constructivism, there's even another one right opposite. In a way, this one's even more striking. So there might be modern shops renting out the space, but the actual building itself has definitely kept its original style. Constructivism was known for its kind of blocky style. And as you can see, there are all these different blocks and shapes. It's certainly interesting, and this building's as good an example as any, I'd say. This little housing block, it might not look like much now, but in the 1930s when it was built, it was considered elite housing. And like most things in the 1930s, it was named after Stalin. And there's actually 100 different apartments packed into this little area. It was fenced off from the outside to give the residents some privacy. A rather unusual monument here I've just come across. I've not seen one quite like that before, actually coming off the wall. The building behind me is a very good example of uh, housing from the constructivist period. And they've got these rows here. It looks like about four different blocks, but actually they're all interconnected, so it's only actually one. With constructivism, it's all about the windows, really. Now, a lot of the time with the Soviet modernism, and I'm complaining, aren't I, about how they're uh, updating the windows and it spoils the effect of the place but the great thing about the constructivist architecture here in Yekaterinburg is that even though it's a hundred years old they're still trying to maintain its original look
apart from that lower one, look how cool these round windows are. That's old school. If you had to choose probably the best and most typical type of constructivist architecture anywhere, you'd be hard pushed to find something better than the building behind me. It was and still is the city's post office. From the inside it's kind of cool but without doubt the highlight is this. Look at that, it's got its own Lenin statue would you believe it. Apparently it's supposed to have been built in the form of a tractor. So I've come the other side of the road to see if I can try to work it out. I mean, <laughs> I think you need to use your imaginations a little bit, but still regardless, what a piece of architecture. So if you guys thought that I was exaggerating a little bit earlier when I said that Yekaterinburg is the best place anywhere, to find constructivist architecture. I mean, you've only got to look around you. Right opposite the post office, you've got another really good example as well. Some of you may remember I walked across this river when it was frozen a month ago to make a video which upset a lot of people. Anyway, you can't walk on the rivers anymore in April, but in the distance there you have got a good example of constructivism, it's the Dinamo Football Stadium. Virtually everything you're seeing today is pretty much in the city centre. That's where they all seem to be. However, there is one noticeable exception in a region of the city that I was in a few weeks ago. So let's just cut away to that quickly. The thing that you're going to see now is one of the most famous sites of Yekaterinburg. I'm not a huge fan of myself, I think it's a bit of an eyesore, but nonetheless it's interesting. It's called the White Tower. The constructivist experiment was a short-lived affair really, by the 1930s it had fallen out of favour, but here in Yekaterinburg we still get to see the best examples of it from its heyday. Bye for now, catch you next time.